Hello everyone, this is Evan Abrams. Well, actually this is an animation of a chicken, but I'm Evan Abrams talking to you right now. And in this After Effects tutorial, we are going to talk about these grainy gradients. I'm gonna show you a method to make such grainy gradients using effects. There are many ways to do this in After Effects. You could use layer styles. You could use textures created in Photoshop or elsewhere. You could use blending modes of other layers, but I'm gonna show you a way to do it with effects. So let's get cracking. And since that's a pun, it's time to start the tutorial. I'm gonna start by making a new composition. None of its settings are important, and we're gonna just get into it. The first thing you need to do is draw some shapes. I like to use shape layers. You could bring in art from elsewhere, but I'm just gonna double click on the ellipse tool and uh, make an ellipse. We, I did it. And then I'm gonna twirl into the ellipse. I'm gonna get into the ellipse path. It doesn't need to be this big. Let's just make it 500 by 500, right in the middle of our composition. Perfectly nice. The thing that is most important about the shape is that it have a gradient on it. So this is how the effect kind of starts. We need to be feeding gradient information into the effect stack we're gonna create. And to do that, you could start many ways. I like to just put a gradient fill on a shape layer and that's wonderful. There's a few reasons for that. Uh, one is that you have a lot of control over that gradient. It could be linear, it could be radial. You know, you can add colors in here. You can change the midpoint of stuff. It's really a pretty versatile thing. So I'm just gonna drag this out. So our circle looks kind of like a sphere. So if you've used any kind of 3D application, you know this is what a material swatch is gonna look like. So it'll, it'll kind of be normal for you. With step one accomplished, it's time to apply some effects to this. And the first effect is going to be noise. There are many types of noise in After Effects. I'm just typing into the effects and presets panel over here and typing in noise gets you things like fractal noise or just the word noise. Uh, I want noise HLS. That's noise hue lightness saturation. And I'm going to adjust the lightness noise. I'm just going to jack that up. Maybe it's a 10 just to illustrate what we're doing here. And now we've created our graininess. So the noise is going to be how grainy is the thing. All right, the next thing to do is to clamp down on this. We don't want all these different values. I only want three values. So I'm going to posterize. Posterize is basically saying, all right, image, I'm only interested in some colors. So you could have two colors, you could have five colors, but I would like three colors. I would like the highlight, the midtones and then the shadows. One, two, three. Wonderful. We've kind of set up sort of a black and white version of what we want in the end, right? So if we're going for the chicken look here, then if it was the eyeball, we're pretty much done. Uh, but we have one color and then another color and then a third color. So we've We've done it. They aren't the colors we want, but we are going to change that. And we're gonna change that using the tritone. So if we add the tritone out here, you'll notice we can now change the highlights, midtones, and shadows. Kind of a theme going on here, right? Maybe I want the midtones to be, I don't know, like a like a pink color, like a like a bright pink. Maybe, I don't really know. Then I'm gonna just sample, I'm gonna take the highlights and I'm gonna sample that middle color. I take the shadows and sample that middle color as well. So then when I go to the shadows, I can go and just make it, make it a dark purple, neat. And I could mess with the hue a little bit. Maybe it's both darker and bluer. And then I can go to the highlights and take the highlights and you know, maybe push it in the opposite direction, make it less saturated, make it quite a bit brighter, neat. And now we've got sort of three phases of this thing. And now we get to mess around with it and continue pushing it in all the directions until it arrives at where we wanna be. So maybe we want them to be a little bit grainier. All right, maybe we need the base, uh, the base thing, the gradient to be more like this. Maybe we need to push this a little bit push this a little bit around. Maybe we uh, maybe we don't want uniform noise, we want squared noise. Maybe we don't want squared noise, we want grainy noise. So we can choose, you know, these kind of three slightly different looks. The bottom two are a lot more different, but as you can see, grainy, grainy stuff. This is good. So if you, if you jack that up, it starts to look like this. Pretty cool, right? And you could say, well, 
I don't want three levels. I want uh, four levels. I want five levels. You know, you can you can mess around with that as much as you'd like. And you might have to to achieve the exact look you're going for. I, I said at the beginning there are many ways to do this, and there are many limitations of the different ways you might do these things. Uh, one of the things I really like about this method is it allows you to define sort of the areas, the dark and light areas. You can build up a gradient out here. Just say, I want to highlight over here, highlight over here. You can work that up and then just apply effects to it and this happens. So that's something that's very nice about it. You're able to really control the gradient. So if you go in here and you're like, well, now the gradient is like this. So now it's this kind of a gradient. What do you think? Highlights on both sides. It's like there's light in the front and the back. Pretty cool. And even within a shape layer, you can set your gradient fill to be a darken, a lighten, so you can have different highlight points on there. You could even go so far as to build up something in a composition, then apply these effects to that composition. It's wide open. It's wonderful. One spot where it does kind of fall down on its face is the idea of blending it in. So you'll notice the edge here is still a very crisp, perfect circle. That could be fun for you. But if you want to sort of grain up that uh, outside, you need to mess with its alpha bounds a bit to make that happen. Uh, you might even just change the blending mode to dissolve and then give it a little blur. That can be a fun way to make things happen. So if we just go blur, putting that blur sort of behind everything at the, at the start of the stack and then blurring it up and see what that's doing. But you know, this now doesn't match this, so we gotta take that grain and maybe we make it uh, squared or uniform or something like that just so it it fits in, but you might use a rough and edges, you might use something else. I don't know, I don't know. But as you can see, you could also just apply, this is another composition I did, you could just apply the fast blur after everything, and then again, you've got a different kind of look. So, so the base is make it noisy, clamp that noise, recolor that noise, and you're done. But that is pretty much it. All I did was take that basic idea and apply it to some shapes. Also, you have to make the shapes move and that needs to be interesting, but that's a matter for another tutorial. So hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully now you can apply this idea to your own stuff. You might use a different method and there are many other methods out there that we'll also cover in other tutorials. Let's call this uh, an intro to grainy gradients and hopefully you've enjoyed it. So I've been Evan Abrams. Hopefully this has worked out for you. If it hasn't, let me know in the comments. If you have questions about this technique, or this tutorial or anything at all, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you. If you have suggestions about future tutorials, uh, let me know in the comments as well. Or hit me up at EC Abrams on Twitter or on Instagram or Facebook. Links to all that stuff in the description. And if you don't want to wait, you can check out our back catalog of excellent tutorials right here on this channel. If you would like to have a look at this chicken animation for yourself, the project file is available at evanabrams.com. And last but not least, if you enjoy this kind of thing, you should subscribe to this channel because we're putting out new stuff hopefully every week sometimes not but uh, that's the goal is a tutorial a week but if you subscribe if you follow those links places then i'll see you around the internet thank you so much for watching and have a great day